Last week, we wrapped up our current sermon series, Gripped by the Greatness of God, which was an in-depth study on worship. Today, Pastor Terry and the worship team will be devoting our entire service leading us into worship. You will enjoy a special time in the presence of God. During this service, we will also be celebrating seven baptisms and a baby dedication. Let's prepare our hearts for this special worship presentation on this Worship Sunday. It is time to worship our King. It is time to magnify the only God who can do anything. All other gods are a lie. We are here to worship who? True God. Donna? Jesus, that's right. And we're going to lift his name on high today. Amen. There is a time. There is a time. There is a place for everything under heaven. So as we gather now in this place, it's time. Celebrate his miracles, his power, his love, and the gift of this brand new day. It's time to stand up and passionately give our people. We lift our hands, so we lift our hands, we lift our voice. With thanks, we shout for joy.
Christians. You didn't know this when you walked in? We, we snuck it up on you, okay? Today is Worship Sunday, and we're also going to celebrate. We have seven baptisms today and a baby dedication. We're going to incorporate that all in the service, so praise God. So what, is, what, what are we going to do? Children, youth, you guys are going to be with us all day today, all except for nursery and preschool. We do have something for you is out there, but everyone else is welcome here. Parents, this is where we teach our kids what worship is all about. You know what I'm saying? This is where we show our expressions and our love and our admiration and our appreciation and thankfulness for the King of Kings for what he's done in our lives. Amen? Our children learn us not by osmosis. They learn us by watching. Amen? They learn us by the way we talk, the way we express, and how we live our own lives. So today, this is Worship Sunday. We've been studying called The Greatness, Gripped by the Greatness of God for the last, uh, what, four weeks? And... Uh, there's been a tremendous response to it in people's lives and the way they worship God. And I think it's awesome. And I think that's what God wants to do. And as God is worshipped, amen, He inhabits the praises of His people. He comes here. He wel he's welcomed. So right now what we're going to do, we're going to welcome God. But in the, at the same time, I'm going to ask all the kids. Hey kids, you listening to me? I want to have you guys come on up. Come on up here to the front. We're going to do something special. But in the meantime, I'm going to pray. Okay? Heavenly Father... We welcome you. Amen. Let's just put our hands in our heart and say, heart, ready to receive God, ready to receive his presence today. I will worship the Lord. Nothing will I hold back what is due my king. Nothing will I hold back what is due my savior who rescued my soul. Hallelujah. And Lord, I worship you joyfully, gladly, loudly, whatever it may be. I worship the king of king and the Lord of lords today. Amen. Amen. Come here, guys. All right up here. Now, I'm going to do something that's going to be totally embarrassing. Whoever's uh, heard of David when, when he made that comment? I will, uh, what, how did he make that? What was that comment he said? I will, I will be more undignified from, than this. In other words, the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the presence of God in the Old Testament. The Ark of the Covenant was being brought back into the city. And David was so excited that Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He's getting all excited. The Holy God is here. The Lord is here that he danced and he took off his robe and he danced he says man this robe it's just too heavy this kingly garb this kingly chain this necklace everything about it's just too much i want to worship god without all this stuff on me today hallelujah and he put god ahead of his own kingship amen and he danced and he sang so today we have a song that's called sing and shout and i'm going to do something totally undignified you think that's possible okay <laughs> i'm going to do something i'm going to I am not a dancer. I have no rhythm. I only have the white man overbite move. <laughs> That's the only move I got, okay? That's it. Now and then I'll just get crazy. But I'm going to do something crazy today. You guys are more than welcome. You can watch me and you kind of like, Mommy, Daddy, come rescue me, okay? They're not going to re rescue you. You're going to dance with me, okay? You guys can watch this. But I'm going to come down here with you guys. And church, don't stand here and watch me. Don't stand there and watch me. You enter into worship. You enter and sing and shout praises to God today. Amen. Let's welcome the king of the universe. Let's sing your cross. Your cross. Your cross. It draws me to your heart. It makes my spirit sing, it makes my spirit sing. Your grace, your grace, though I hear it call my name. I'm waking up to sing, I'm waking up to sing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your cross, your cross, it draws me to your heart.
Open up our hearts and pour your praises out. We will sing and shout. We will sing and shout. You guys can be seated. Not bad for a bald guy with three left feet. Amen? Yeah. It's not about us today. Let me, I want to read something to you. Actually, what I want to do is catch my breath. But hey, <laughs> need oxygen, that's right. I want to read something to you. Some biblical expressions of praise. Why do we praise? Well, number one, you heard that song. What could be better than a grace? That saves me, amen? What could be, see, the thing is, why sick people don't take certain medicine? Seriously, why certain, certain people who are sick who don't take their medicine? It's because they don't believe they're that sick. They don't. They think, I'm okay. It's not so bad. It won't be so bad. So they reject the medicine. They reject that thing. It could totally heal them and make them whole. That's the same thing with Jesus Christ. We don't realize how sick and desperate and despicable we are because of sin in our life. Amen? We don't. And if we only realize what is awaiting those who reject God, what is awaiting those who say, I want nothing to do with the living God, if we only knew what was awaiting those. See, God did not prepare heaven, I'm sorry, hell for the people. He created hell for the devil who rejected him and rebelled against him in heaven. He says, you're going to spend eternity in hell. And the devil says, fine. I'm going to trick your people and I'm going to drag them down there with me. And that breaks God's heart. And if we only realize what our sin does and what it will do to us, I tell you what right now, we would say, thank you. What could be better than the grace of God who came down and made a way for me to go to heaven? Amen. That's what that song is saying. We will sing and shout. I don't care what the rest of the world says. Look at them. They're getting kind of crazy. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> because we know we're sick and we need a Savior. They need to know as well. Let me give you some biblical expressions of praise. Obviously, certain churches and uh, certain people, they love the more stoic praise. And I understand that. That's cool. I, I, I like that too when I'm really tired. <laughs> praise God. Yeah, amen. 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 Yeah. You know what? Throughout Scripture, throughout the Bible, we read, there's declarations of thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Throughout, when you feel just an expression of love for God, just shout out, thanks, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. See that spit and everything. It all goes towards the grace and glory of God. That's right. All right. Clapping of hands and shouting. Let's see you guys clap hands. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Woo. Woo. My God reigns. My God's alive. Church, when the city of Rochester sees a church on fire for Jesus Christ, you know what they do? They come. Let's go watch that church burn. Man, they're crazy. They're on fire. People come to watch people burn for Jesus Christ, and it's very catchy. <laughs> when they get rubbing up against you, next thing you know, they're like, going, "Woo!" You know, whatever it is, they just feel, and the Holy Spirit works on them. They realize it's, it's not the emotion that saves. All of a sudden, the emotion breaks everything, every bondage that's in their life. And they start listening to the words, and they say, you know what? This is true. I'm despicable. I need a Savior. I'm sick. And so our clapping and our shouting breaks the yoke of bondage upon people's lives. Number three, singing praises songs. That's what we're doing here today. Number four, songs and hymns and spiritual songs. You may say, I don't know the words. Just make up your own. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You're holy. You're awesome. Making a joyful noise. You know, I tried to get Barry to dance with me. He made a joyful noise. Now! But I, I consider that a joyful noise. No, he didn't make that. But I'm just saying we can make a noise. Hallelujah. Being still. Being still in the presence of God says, like, man, you know, there's going to be times for that. Being still and just saying, God, thank you. 
and then also being loud. You mean being Terry Baldwin? Yes, being loud. Be loud. Hallelujah. And then musical instruments and, of course, dancing. <laughs> Dance. Dance before the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, I want to, the altars are open. You can do what you want. There's going to be times, and you guys are thinking, oh, my goodness, Worship Sunday. I didn't bring my tennis shoes, okay? You don't, don't worry about it. There'll be times you guys can sit. We'll let you sit. It's not like you don't have to stand the whole time. But I encourage you right now just to say, you know what? World, get behind me right now. My attention and focus is on my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We invite you here. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, will you please move in our lives and help us to lift Jesus higher? Holy Spirit, help us to lift the only name that can save and that can redeem and restore us and can heal us and it can save us. The only name. There's only one name by which man can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's the name we worship today. Hallelujah, Lord God. So Holy Spirit, help us to worship Jesus today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Barry, beat him. <laughs> Donna. God bless you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Praise await you in this place today, O oh Lord. I gathered ready, God, to sing the praise. Ready to respond, and we're ready to respond to the glories of your name, to the wonders of your heart. Your great love, praise is waiting for you in this place. There's a cry that our spirits will make as we see your glory. To your mercies my soul will awake as we worship our Savior today. Because you are worth, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Seasons come, seasons come, and seasons go, but you remain. So I'm changing all deserving of my praise. So we're ready to respond. We're ready to respond to the glories of your name, to the wonders of your heart, to your great praise is waiting. Praise is waiting for you in this place. There's a cry that our spirits will make as we see your glory. To your mercies our souls will awake. Our Savior today, because you are worthy. Yes, Lord. All right, we're going to sing. We're ready to respond. We're going to make it a prayer. God, these words we're singing directly to you. Ready to respond. We're ready to respond to the glories of your name the wonders of your heart to your great love again ready to respond to the glories of your name to the wonders of your heart to your great love praise is waiting for you our Savior today because you are worthy. Sing it again. Praise is waiting for you in this place. God, there's a cry that my spirit will make as we see your glory. To your mercies our souls will awake as we worship 
worship our Savior today because you are nice and loud now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. One more time. song. Sing to a God who reigns, cause he's the hope for the world in darkness, and he's the light for all to see. Sing to the King of glory, yes, sing to the King of kings. All creation declares your greatness, as your people bring you praise, cause our God reigns. Nobody can knock him off. Run to love that never fails. Arms and 
this old hymn. my head. 
Some of the highlights I just want to just mark on and talk about why we praise and worship. Why is it so important? Why even do it, you know? Is it just the, um, the pep rally for the church, so to speak? You know, there's a one particular guy. He was a Christian artist. His, um, I can't think of his name right now, but uh, Carmen, how'd you know I was going to talk about him? We're brothers. We're brothers. <laughs> we didn't shave our heads for nothing. That's how we communicate. But Carmen, he, uh, he writes these songs, and they're just uplifting, and they're just praising God. As a matter of fact, a Christian magazine wrote an article about him, and they called him, and they kind of put it in a, a demeaning sort of way. They called him God's cheerleader. Like that was something that was beneath a professional musician that should be out there, you know, doing professional stuff, more serious stuff. You know what? Praise God. What a badge. What a badge. That's what the church, that's what the world needs is a church that is God's cheerleader. Because we don't save. This building don't save. This group of body of believers does not save. It is Jesus. And that's who we should be trumpeting. That's who we should be cheerleading. That's who we should be talking about all the time with every breath that we have. We are called to be God's cheerleader. Amen? Amen. And so when we come together and we worship, people say, oh, that's just hype. That's just, you know it may be, but the thing is this. You know, there, there's certain times, you know, I keep going off on these other little tangents things, but there's this one thing. Uh, uh, psychologists, they say, like, if they're in a marriage counseling, I don't love him anymore. I don't love her anymore. Are you guys willing to work on this marriage? All right. I'm willing to work on this marriage. I'm willing to work on the marriage too. All right. If they're willing to work on a marriage, there's hope. Hallelujah. And this is one of the things that they teach them to do. They say, what I want you to do, I want you to start thinking lovely thoughts about your wife. I want you to start thinking, honoring thoughts about your husband. I want you to say, I love my wife. I want you to verbalize these things. But I, I don't feel it. I don't care. Do it. The thing is this, our emotions follow our decisions. Our emotions follow decisions. You can decide, I'm going to have a bad day, and <laughs> you're going to have a bad day. Your emotions follow your decisions. And so we have, there's power and there's life in our tongue. And so when we come to God, we say, you know, I don't feel like worshiping God. I don't have this heart for God. Praise God, you just start worshiping God. First of all, you can worship Him for so many reasons. There's, there's more reasons to worship God than there's, I don't see any reason not to worship God. If you guys can come up with a good one, you let me know. There's no reason not to worship our Heavenly Father, not God, and our King and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No reason. So what we need to do is just say, you know, Lord, I know you're God, and I'm going to worship you for all these wonderful things. You know what? The emotions will follow. The emotions will follow the lead of the mind, of the spirit, and of the will of the man, okay? I encourage you to do that. So, there is power in the praise and worship. That's why we do it. We need to be God's cheerleaders, the church especially. We don't need to be like the world. And I'm not, not saying, oh, right, we gotta be these separatists. We're just so weird that we can't be in the world because the world doesn't have anything to do with this. The world will have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. And for that reason, if you're a Christian, they won't have anything to do with you. Now, I'm not saying go out there advocating, go out there and just being weird for Jesus Christ's sake. No. If you're being weird for your weird sake, then that's what you're going to get, and you deserve it. But we are to be, for Jesus Christ, we are to be his cheerleaders, and we are to give the truth, because he 
saves, he heals, he delivers, he sets free, he breaks the chain of yoke that's upon your neck, that the, the depression, he can heal that. He can do all these great things. He's the God who created the universe. There's a saying that says this, if there's a God, then there's miracles. If there's miracles, then there's a God. Hallelujah. There's miracles in the world today because there is a God. And God wants to do miracles in our life. And that happens when we invite him into every situation that we have. That's right. Every situation. You go to work, invite him to work with you. You get in the car, invite him to go to car, get in the car with you. You know, slap the seatbelts on Jesus Christ. You know, he needs it too. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> Roger, thank you very much. For <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. <clears throat> but the thing is this. Invite God into every circumstance and situation that you have. Man, right now, my marriage is shot. Right now, my job is on the line. Right now, I just feel so unworthy. Invite God into that situation and allow God to do his miracle work. Allow God to be a miracle working God. What kind of God do you serve today, church? What kind of God do you serve today? Is he a mamby pamsy God? You see God that the, the dead church talks about and there's no relationship, there's no love, there's no passion, there's no power, there's no miracles. Is that the kind of God you serve? No. no, that's not the God we serve today and we need to say, this is the God I serve and I declare it today. I believe it and I trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Declare it to the world. Be God's cheerleader. There is power in praise and worship. Invite God into the circumstance. And how you do that is by singing a song about him, by worshiping him. You don't have to sing to do it. You could just start saying, Lord, you are awesome. That's praise. Lord, you are beautiful. Lord, everything about you right now, I need today to sustain. I need you today so that I don't go off on my boss or I don't go off on my coworkers. You know, Christians need that help. Amen? Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean all of a sudden you walk through life and everyone can, you know, you still have that sinful nature. It's called flesh. That's why you need to pull upon the Spirit of God who dwells inside of you and just say, help me, Jesus, in this situation. Because the Spirit of slap will come over me and I'll do something wrong. Amen? So what we need to do is call upon God in that situation. God fights our battles when we call upon Him. Did you know that? God fights our battles. Remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. What does that mean? Well, we don't get mad at the people at school. We don't get mad at the teachers. We don't get mad at our friends and we take it out on them and verbalize, cut them down whack them on the head through Facebook, or whatever it may be that you're doing. We don't fight them and we don't say, talk bad about them, however it may be, gossip. We don't do that. That's flesh and blood. Because you know what? God died for them. God died for every one of us. We fight against an enemy. Who's our enemy, church? Satan. Satan. Amen. Say that with me. Satan. He's the enemy. Satan is the enemy. Is he more powerful than God? No. Absolutely not. He's been created by God. And God says, you know what, Satan, you're having your day for right now. But you know what? There's coming a day. There's coming an hour. And there's coming a time. And you know it well. Because he trembles and shakes. That God's going to take him and cast him into the eternal lake of fire. Where he will be forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And with all those that he's deceived, they will be there too. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need to proclaim it. And we should never fear the devil. So remember, people are not our enemy. Amen? The devil is our enemy. So when you see a situation, don't think, ah, they've got the devil. Don't do that, okay? That's bad. What you do, you go into your closet, you go into a situation, you just start praising God. Say, Lord, in this situation, I want to see you glorified. And the only way you're going to be glorified is if I respond in the right way and the proper way. And right now, I respond in the proper way by worshiping and praising you and inviting you into the situation. You are my source. You are my strength. You are my present help in a time of trouble. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. That's the God, and it's powerful, and we need to believe that. Believe it, believe it, believe it. God fights our battles. Our worship of God sends the enemy running. Hallelujah. In a situation. Remember the story of Jehoshaphat. Yeah, that's not just a saying. Oh, Jehoshaphat, you know, on Looney Tunes. Jehoshaphat was actually a king. And then this king, the enemy came against him. Multiple enemies came against him. And what did he do? Number one, he was afraid because he's flesh. He wasn't the super Christian. I fear not, therefore, I, you know, he was afraid and he was a flesh. But what did he do? He immediately went and praised God. He immediately went and sought God in the situation. And what he did, the Lord, number one, came in, brought peace. The Lord came in and gave a word that says, you know what? I need not fear. I need not tremble. I need not worry about the situation because my God is going to fight. As a matter of fact, that was the word. Stand still and see God. See that he is Lord and he will fight the battle for you. Next morning, when Jehoshaphat and the whole 
the army of Israel went out to see what was happening. What did they do? All these enemies that outnumbered them, outnumbered them vastly, outnumbered them not only in numbers, but outnumbered them in weapons, out, 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 had too many more horses than them, had better weapons, had everything greater. But when they worshiped God and they sought God and they got up the next morning, the Bible says there was not a single one left alive because God brought confusion into the enemy's camp. When God stepped into the camp, I imagine he just kind of stepped into that camp at night while they were sleeping. And all the hell, remember, flesh is not our enemy. And as soon as God stepped into that camp, I can just imagine all demon forces like scatter, run, hide, find a rock, get out of here, whatever it may be. They fled and they feared. And when that happened, confusion came into the minds of these people and they just started attacking each other and they all killed each other see God fights our battles if if church we invite him into that situation if we praise him if we sing his praises and we seek him in that situation if amen and that's what the church does we do that sort of thing hallelujah so are you overwhelmed by the troubles of life are the things in your life, are you overwhelmed by those things? Man, invite God into that situation. I don't care what it is. God knows every aspect of our lives. Health, finances, relationships, uh, you name it. Emotions. Hallelujah. If you're overwhelmed by your circumstances, praise God. Then the praises and worship of God with all your heart. Be radical. <laughs> be radical. You know, you don't have to be radical in front of people. You can go in your prayer, prayer closet and be radical. Matter of fact, that's what God honors more than anything. Lots of people can whoop it up out in public, but sometimes they whoop it up for whooping it up, you know, reasons for, you know, that reason. But get in your closet and just start worshiping God in the situation. Thank Him. As you're driving, thank Him, Lord, that you are going to intervene in this situation. Hallelujah. Worship is an act of our life today. Let's continue to worship.
anything in my life that's hindering anything here, Lord, forgive me. I want your mercy to flow, God. I want people to long for you. So, Jesus, we lift you high. Everyone look to Jesus. We lift him high. Everyone look to Jesus. We lift you high. Draw the world to you. Let your mercy flow like the blood of your veins, God. As we lift you high. Everyone look to Jesus. this place we raise you up draw the world sinners look to Jesus we lift you high to give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to one another God give us clean were formed, you breathed and life was born. Jesus. 
broken every chain my sins are gone my debt's been paid cause you gave you gave your life away for me for me you lived a sinless life Church, that's, uh, that's why we're here. We worship a king who gave his life away. Really. And I, you've heard me say this again and again. You know, so is my kids. <laughs> but that is this. is uh, Jesus gave his life. He was God, creator, universe extraordinaire. You can't get any bigger than creating the universe, amen? <laughs> you don't get any bigger than that. But he humbled himself. He took on the form of human flesh. Why? This, this wasn't something that he wanted to do. The only reason why he did it is because he loved us so much that we are on our way to eternal separation from Jesus Christ. Eternal separation from God. God didn't create us to be eternally separated from us. Amen? He created us to have a relationship with every single person alive. Every single person, that's why God created you, to have a relationship, a loving relationship. And that relationship is broken and it's stopped by sin in our own life. We think we're good. We do. We think that we're okay. We think we're fine, just like that scenario I gave earlier. I don't need your medicine. I'm healthy. I'm fine. But there's people dying all around us. The evidence of sin, number one, is physical death. Number two, 
It's a spiritual death separation from God. And that is why God came. He came in the form of a human, of a man, humbled himself. He went through every single thing you've ever gone through. If you ever think, well, he's never been through this situation, God's been through that situation. He's not a priest who's unacquainted with our, uh, our feelings, with our hurts, with our pains. He's not a, a priest who's unfamiliar with it. He's very familiar with what you're going through. Because he came and he lived a life with us. And he made a way. He paid the price. You and I have sinned. We die. We get what we deserve. Sin. For the wages of sin is death. Eternal separation from God. We get what we deserve. But God did not want us to die that way. He came. He says, I'll pay their debt. I've not sinned. I've not done anything wrong. I'm holy. I'm God. I took on the form. My father is not man. My father is God in heaven. And I'll take on that form. And he paid the debt. He paid the debt. And because of that, we can say, Lord, will you please forgive me for my sins? I'm sorry. And he will forgive you. That's the whole reason why he came. The whole reason why he came. You may be seated. For those who are going to be baptized, I want you guys to just go ahead and make your way back there. And those who, who would help them with, I appreciate that, please. Well, that really, that is why we sing. That is why we worship God. That's why we're here. And the thing is this, the world needs to know it. The world needs to know it. And one of the best ways for the world to know it is for a church who believes it. Amen. So many times we believe it, we kind of understand it, but we've never really applied it to our life. We've never really sat and thought about what I deserve. Remember I said that we're all sick. You've heard me do this again and again, but you know what? It's the truth. Truth bears repeating again and again. We in America think that we have to have something fresh and new every single time. Amen? God does give fresh word. He gives fresh manna, the Bible says. But the thing is this. We need to know that, number one, we are sick and we need a Savior. You might be here today thinking, you know what? I'm A-OK. -okay. I'm not as bad as the person behind me. I'm not as bad as the people at home. I'm not as bad as the people at work. I'm not as bad as people in, uh, uh, who do all kinds of wicked, wicked, wicked things. But God doesn't put us on a scale. He doesn't grade us on a scale. That thing that, remember growing up in school, he was great on a scale. It's like, oh, please, oh, please let them have an F so therefore I may get a D minus. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was. But I was on the scale. I was the one who's, you know, bringing everyone else down. But God doesn't grade anyone on a scale. He grades us against his perfect law. He grades us against the law. Have you broken a law? If you've ever told a lie, ever told a lie once in your life, the Bible says that, and common sense tells you, if you told a lie, you are a liar. And the Bible says, no liar shall have a part in heaven. Why? Why is God so mean? Why is he so strict? <laughs> God is so holy. He's so holy. He will never allow anything like that to come near him or touch him. He can't because he's God. He would consume it. His holiness and his righteousness would just consume it immediately. And so if we was go to heaven with our sins, if we go to heaven with our lies, we would be consumed by the fire of God. We cannot be in the presence of God if we've told a lie. We cannot be in the presence of God if we've ever stolen anything. I don't care how small, how great it may be. We cannot go to heaven if we've ever looked upon, if we've ever committed adultery or even thought about committing adultery. See, God's law is so above. So, so many people like to go, well, the letter of the law, the letter of the law, and they look for ways around the law. I hope there's no lawyers here today. Nothing wrong with godly lawyers, okay? <laughs> but sometimes if, if, if you have enough money, you can get a good arguer, a good law, lawyer who argues and knows how to argue, and he can break the law and get you off scot-free. That will never, ever happen in heaven. Never. Because our judge is God. And he will not be duped. And he will not be tricked. And he will not be manipulated by man. He goes, my law is holy. And I'm going to hold you up against it. How do you stand? How do you look? And that's why we need Jesus Christ. Because everyone has lied. Everyone has lusted in their heart. Everyone has thought wrong thoughts. Everyone has hated. And the Bible says if you hate, he says, I'm going to put that on a higher plane. It's not just these laws that you get around. Oh, I, I hated just a little bit because they did this. That's why I hate. God says, if you hate, I'm not going to judge you because you hate. I'm going to judge you as a murderer. 
Yeah, that's pretty harsh. Well, in the eyes of God, that's what it is. Because we're all created in the image of God. So you see how holy he is. Now, he's so holy, he's not trying to sit up barriers. He says, you can't come near me. He made a way. He broke those barriers. He broke those barriers by coming man and came down and died on the cross that we can have eternal life. If we would just say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I can't make it to heaven by being good. I can't make it to heaven by going to church enough. You've already broke the law once. It's not like, well, I broke it once, and I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Try that with a judge today. If you, if you was to kill someone and say, ah, oh, judge, I admit I'm a murderer, but I won't do it again. He's not going to say, all right, get out of here, you. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that at all. He's going to say, because I'm a righteous judge, I want to see that you get what you deserve, and you deserve the death penalty. It's the same way with God. We need an advocate. We need someone to take that price for us. We need Jesus Christ. That's the whole reason why Jesus Christ. That's why we're here today. So we need to put our trust in Jesus. No one can come to the Father. No other religion can come to the Father. No good works can come to the Father. No amount of tithe that you pay can come to the Father. Nothing can bring you to the Father except for Jesus Christ. Amen? And Him alone. And that's why we need to cling to Him. That's, not, that's why we need to preach His name. We need to declare His name at every chance that we get. He is the salvation of this world and every one of us. Amen? Hallelujah. You know that. Do you believe it? Can you go out and tell people that? And I tell you what, when you come and you worship God, what that does, that just gives you the boldness. It gives you the strength. It gives you the courage to go out and say, you know what, I've been in the presence of God. <laughs> Let me tell you about him. Let me tell you about him. That's what worship does. And that's why the church comes together. Hallelujah. And there's healing in worship. We talked about that. There's wholeness and there's healing in our life physically, emotionally, relationship. There's healing. And that only comes through Jesus Christ and nobody else. Hallelujah. Today... Uh, we're going to celebrate. Oh, look, they're already in there. <laughs> They've probably been in there already. They already have wrinkles by the time I'm done talking, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, the wrinkles on your fingers? Okay, anyway, today we're celebrating because seven lives have said, you know what? <laughs> I need Jesus. They realize they need a Savior, and they've given their lives to Jesus, and that's what baptism is all about. Baptism is like this, church. By the way, baptism does not save you. Blaspheme. No, baptism does not save you. Amen. Baptism is a sign, is a saying, I've given my life to Jesus. See this ring right here? When I do weddings, we, we hold the rings up and we pray. This is an outward sign of an inward promise. This is a promise that I will remain faithful and true. This is a promise that I belong to you and someone belongs to me. God says, that's what baptism is. It's an outward sign to the world saying, you know what? I've died to myself. I've died to me trying to do things my way. And I've died to me just trying to just be good. I can't be good. I need Jesus Christ. And so when we give our life to Jesus, this is a sign that says, I trust you. When we put him underwater, this is like Jesus when he was buried. He died, but yet he rose again because he's victorious. See, we need to die with Jesus Christ. We can't die in our sins because we die in our sins. We go to hell. So he said, Jesus, I need you. And so we accept Jesus' death on our behalf. And so this sign is a symbol. We're buried. You can't breathe underwater. Not yet. <laughs> you don't have gills, do you? You can't breathe underwater. And so we've died with Jesus and we've been risen. We've been risen because Jesus Christ is risen and he promises that he will bring, come back and he will raise us again from the dead if, he, if we should die or if he should come back right now as we go up to heaven with him right now. That's the promise of God. And so that's what we're celebrating today. Go ahead and watch this uh, video, and we'll watch who's going to be baptized. Hi, I'm Addie Friels, and I've always believed in Jesus Christ, but it wasn't until I started asking my grandmother questions about it. She cried a bit, and I humbled myself after that. And I asked him for forgiveness. And ever since then, I felt his presence with me. I felt like he actually filled me with the Holy Spirit, like a warm, tingly feeling came. And ever since then, I, want, I wanted to spend my, the rest of my life with Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Addie, I just want you to know. Hey, go ahead. I want you to know this. Um, you're absolutely right. When you ask Jesus into your heart, 
your heart. He fills you with his Holy Spirit. That's a, a seal. He's coming back for the Holy Spirit, and he belongs to you, and you belong to him. And so you're going to heaven with him. Hallelujah. Addie, we're very proud of you. And Grandma, we're very proud of you that you're constantly speaking truth and life to your grandchildren. I know you love them so much, and it's very, very evident. And because of that, God has used your prayers. God, I want you to hear this, grandparents and mothers and fathers. God uses your prayers for your children. Amen? Never give up on them. Never give up on them. Pray, pray, pray. Hallelujah. And because of that, Addie's eyes have been opened to the truth. Addie, we've heard your declaration. You're going to live for Jesus the rest of your life? You've asked him into your heart to forgive you for your sins? Well, Addie, by your own confession, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I like that, Jimmy. That's good. <laughs> we have uh, another video. Go ahead and show that. Hi, Cassandra Brown. I've been saved for quite a few years now. I've never been baptized, and I've just felt a calling that I need to be. Um, I'm just ready to bury the old me and become a new me. <laughs> Are you going to take the picture? There we go. I, I stuck my head in right when I said you're going to take the picture. So anyway, uh, Cassandra, you're absolutely right. You're not the old person anymore. Jesus has made you new. Jesus has made you new. See, we so hard try to get to God by being good. You know what? We just go to God. He makes us new. Amen? He makes us new. That's a good news because I can't do it. And God has made you new. And God's going to do a work in your life. He's going to work in your family. God loves you and he's very proud of you. So you've asked Jesus into your heart and life? Hallelujah. Well, by your own admission, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, we have uh, one, couple more. Go ahead. Hi, my name's Augusta. Wait a minute. Go ahead. And I tell you what. Turn that up, you please. Start over. And I really felt the presence. Of Start over and turn it up. Make sure we can hear their name. Hi, my name's Augusta. Up and. I went to church camp this year, and I really felt the presence of God at chapel, and I just broke down and cried and asked him into my life. And I realized that I just needed him, and um, I just want to live for him forever. Hallelujah. Hello, Augusta. Hey, if you have kids who've never been to church camp, can I in encourage you to send them off? Number one, they're away from you for a week. Number two... They're in the presence of, they're, they're just saturated. They're just saturated with the presence of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so, and then lot, many, many people have heard the call of God on their life at church camp. Hallelujah. And Augusta, you heard God knocking on your door, didn't you? And you, you've, you've been around church a lot, but it was at that moment that you heard God just saying, I love you and I want you as my daughter. And you responded. You've asked Jesus into your heart and life. Well, Augusta, by your own admission, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay. My name is James Up the Second. I gave my life to Jesus Christ in, uh, sometime in January. And, uh, I'm here for the long haul. Well, if we ever need the part to play for Jesus Christ in the play, we have found him. I'm just waiting for the dub to come down right about now. <laughs> it's wonderful to see a family that comes together and is baptized. Amen? Hallelujah. We want to go to heaven. We want to be where Jesus is, but we don't want to go alone. We want to bring our family with us, and we want to bring our friends and our neighbors, and we want to bring the world with us. No one should be duped by the devil. Amen? Hallelujah. James, I'm very proud of you. I've seen a change in you. I see this man sitting back there, and I can just see, in all honesty, I see the hunger in you for the things of God. I see you just 
hearing the words, holding on to the words, and hallelujah. Your encouragement to me just preaching. I got to tell you that, okay? <laughs> I keep saying, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. But anyway, <laughs> he's an encouragement to me. You could see the hunger, and that's what we want. We want that hunger. We want that drive that just causes us to go after God with all of our hearts. Well, James, uh, James you've asked Jesus into your heart. Amen? All right. Well, by your own admission, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Proud of you, buddy. Good job, bud. Um, hi, my name is Sammy Shriver, and I'm getting baptized today. Um, I came to know Christ when I was probably in kindergarten or first grade, and I didn't really, didn't really know what it meant then, I don't think, but like over time I've learned more and it means a lot more to me, so. Hallelujah. You going to get your picture taken there? There you go. Samantha, you know, what Samantha said there, and a lot of us may totally associate with that. You know, I grew up in church, and I accepted Jesus at a very young age. Lots of times when we accept Jesus at a young age, it's, it's more or less us adopting our parents' faith. And then as we grow older, we experience things in life. And then we realize that faith doesn't really stand. It's good. You need it. You need your parents' faith at first, amen? Parents, give it to them. Give it to them. But then there comes a time where God says, I want you. I love your parents, but I want you, and I want you to have faith in me. And so, Sam, you heard that in your life, and we're very, very proud of you. And number one, you've made it to everyone. you made this commitment to everyone, and we're very proud of you. Well, have you asked Jesus into your heart, right? You totally understand now. Well, by your own admission, Samantha, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're proud of you. We're proud of you. Hi, my name is Jesse Schreiber. I became a Christian when I was four or five. Last, I, at VBS, I realized that I wanted to be baptized, so I let everybody know that I'm a Christian, and so the Lord would be my Savior, and everybody would know that. <laughs> hey, man, hallelujah. Well, Jesse, that's why we're here. We're here because you says, I want everyone to know. Look out there. <laughs> they all know that you love Jesus and that you've given your heart to him. And what a wonderful testimony that is. We're very proud of you, man. Very, very proud of you. Can't wait to see what God's going to do in your life, Jesse. God has a purpose and a plan for you that's greater than you can even imagine or even your parents had dreamed for you because God is so good. Well, Jesse, you've asked Jesus into your heart. You understand completely. Well, by your own admission, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job, Jess. Hi, my name is Hunter Shriver, and I gave my life to Jesus when I was five years old. My sister asked me if I was saved yet, and I told, and I didn't know what she was talking about then. So that's what got me started. Bye. <laughs> I want you to know the last three, the last three is all from one family. As a matter of fact, this is their dad right here, Don Shriver. Don, you want to wave to everyone there? The whole family is together being baptized, and... Uh, Hunter, I'm so glad that you listened to your sister, okay? <laughs> that is so rare. That is great. That is so great. And you know what? It's, it's amazing to see the love of a family it, it, all at a very young age. What a wonderful testimony. The world seems to think that the testimony that you have to have was, I was hooked on drugs, I was into Satan worship, I was into rock and roll music, whatever it may be, and the Lord rescued me out of it. The best testimony is what we see right here. Is a family who's raised in the fear and the trust and the, and the love of God. Hallelujah. And what a, we are very proud of you. We're very proud of you and your whole family, Hunter. 
And w I said it right. Okay, you're, there's so many of you. I'm having tr trouble here. Well, Hunter, you've asked Jesus into your heart, and you totally understand now, right? Well, good. Well, Hunter, by your own admission, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. You can go ahead and bring this stuff back there. Well, isn't that awesome? Well, right now we have something else that we want to do. You know, just as God gives new life, you know, the Bible says this, that when we ask Jesus into our hearts, that we become a new creation. We're brand new. We couldn't do anything on our own. You can't make yourself brand new, but God does. We become a new creation. Also, the way we want to populate heaven is by having more babies, okay? <laughs> Who says amen? Okay. <laughs> Today, we, we have a baby dedication. I would like to invite up uh, the uh, right hours, if you would, please. And I don't know if you have some family members that want to come up with you. They are more than welcome. Give us some baby be uh, uh, dedication music, will you please, Jimmy? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Come on up here. I'm going to have a microphone for you. All right, we got the whole family coming up. Like we was talking about. What better way than to have a whole family that loves the Lord and comes to the Lord together, amen? Hallelujah. Well, I tell you what, Bryant, can you introduce everyone? Yeah. All right. Hello, I'm Bryant Reitenauer. This is my wife, Crystal, and uh, my dad, Ed, my mom, Patty, uh, Crystal's grandpa, Kirby, and his gran her grandma, Brenda. And we also have her brother, Tim, and his soon-to-be wife, Chesney, to get married in September. And this is... Yeah, I was going to say, who's that? Was that? <laughs> and while we're here, this is Kyler Edward Reitenauer. Kyler, how And uh, he was born June 24th at 1047, 9 pounds, 4 ounces, and 22 inches long. <laughs> That's a baby. That's a baby. I just want to stand over here by you a little bit. Why don't you, get, why don't you two stand up front there so we're going to have the family just kind of gather around you as we're going to pray for you. But church, the Bible says that children are a gift from God. Amen. And the thing is this, this is important, and this is for you. Children are not our own. They belong to God. That we are to be uh, good stewards of God's children. We're to raise them. We get the blessings of raising them. Some of you may say, well, there's other things to come with it too, Pastor Terry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There, but we get the blessing of being responsible and raising God's children. And today, that's why we're here, and we're trusting you for all that. They only have the awesome, awesome responsibility of caring for this gift, but they also have the wonderful privilege of enjoying this gift. Because children belong to God, we are given, uh, God gives us grace to raise children. You know, in the Bible, there's examples where they dedicated the, Bible, uh, the children back to God. Hannah, when she had her ch uh, child, Samuel, she dedicated him back to God. Jesus was even dedicated back to God by Mary and Joseph. And so today, what we do is we realize that, number one, this little one here is not our own. He's God's, and we have the responsibility of taking care of him, raising him in the love and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus, and in a, a loving home, hallelujah, and I, I see that's going to be very, it's going to happen, it's going to be very easy here. So praise God. In church, not only that, but we, as a church family, you know, they say it takes a village to raise a, raise a kid, amen? Uh, when I was growing up in church, that village, uh, they beat on us a lot too, Jimmy and I. <laughs> we, we were the test of like, do they really love the bald ones? Well, we, they kept us for all those years, so they must have really loved us. Church, we as a family, we're going to be held responsible how we pray, how we love on these kids, make them feel welcome. Amen? Make them feel welcome in church. Love on them. Dolt on them. Talk to them about Jesus. Say, it's so good to see you in church. Let them know. Make them feel at home at church. Amen? The rest of the world, the devil's just looking. Hey, we'll invite you into our lives. We'll invite you into it, but it's not the kind of life you want. Well, church, it should never be that the church chases kids away. We bring them in. It's our responsibility, too, so we want to pray for ourselves as well. So, finally, would you, would you all please stand? I'm just going to have us all stand as we pray for them. Bryant and Crystal, by coming forward before God and His people... Do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your little boy, what's his name? Kyler. Kyler. Kyler 
to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying we do. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we lift up this family to you. And we thank you, Father God, for the gift that you've placed within them. Lord, it's not a mistake that Kyler is here. It is a reason and a purpose. And it's not a mistake he's in this family. He is made for this family. Hallelujah. Always know that, Mom and Dad. There will be seasons and times where the enemy will come and make you feel like you're not a good enough parent. God says, you are. I place this child. I trust you. You are. Hallelujah, Lord. So I thank you for this. Lord, we pray encouragement and strength over this family, and we dedicate Kyler to you today. We dedicate his future to you. We dedicate his whole life to you, God, in Jesus' wonderful name. I thank you, Lord, for this loving family that surrounds not only his parents, but grandparents as well who know the Lord. And thank you for their love, Lord. And may, may they have a hand in forming the future of this child in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, thank you as a church, Lord, that you blessed us with this little one. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We don't take it lightly. We say, Lord, we will dedicate ourselves into loving this family, encouraging this family, praying for this family, lifting up this family. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for this. He smiled. (laughs) It was gas. All right. Well, church, we're going to just go ahead and just... uh, Welcome them back. Welcome the whole family. And we're going to go ahead and continue with three more songs. We're going to close. Actually, one more and then two more, right? Which adds up to three. Okay. All right. Public education. This is a good confession right now. This is our anthem, church. Ready? We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit because He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and He's coming back again. We believe. Let's sing that chorus again. So we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We we believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. Coming back again, we believe. So let the lost be found. So let the lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church live loud to what God will say. We believe, we believe, and the gates of hell will not prevail. For the power of God is torn the veil. Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. Yes, we believe in your crucifixion, and we believe that you conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. Yes, God, we believe. One more time, we believe. We want to do, you thought I forgot, we're going to take up offering, okay? (laughs) So we're going to bring the ushers forward. And you know what? We here at Faith Outreach Center, we believe that number one, tithe and offering is a form of also of our worship for God. It's not just a way, just paying like your bills. It's also a form of worshiping God. Amen? Does, that, does the church believe that today? 
Because the world knows that you love what you spend your money on. So, okay, so we show God, number one, we're being obedient to your word. We want to see your kingdom grow in our lives, in the lives around us, and in this church. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We thank you for the awesome privilege of being in your presence, being in your house, able to worship the living one true God, hallelujah, who loves us, who made a way. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, today we continue worshiping with our tithe and offerings. Lord, we ask that you use, you don't need the gold of this earth because the Bible says the gold of the earth is yours. That's yours. And so, Lord, you don't just need our money, but God, hallelujah, Lord, you use our faith and our obedience. It's through our faith, it's through our actions that your kingdom has grown. So, Lord, I pray that you use this money today to grow the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. And as they're taking up offerings, sing this song, would you? so good to me cause you came and found this orphan and you brought me right into your family oh God you've been so good to me cause you threw away my past and you never count my sins against me thank you Lord you got me dancing and I'm shouting you got me leaping, and I'm spinning, hallelujah. You're so good to me. You're so good to me. You're so good to me. Verse 2. Oh, God, you're so good, good to me. Every day, and every day I wake up and breathe another breath of your mercy. Oh, God, you've been so good to me. And my delight is in you because I know that your hand is upon me. Thank you, Lord. You got me dancing. And now I'm shouting. You got me leaping. And I'm spinning hallelujah. so good to me you're so good to me you're so good to me Jesus you're the one Jesus you're the one who saved myself from me so I will be the one to praise you in the streets praise you God glory hallelujah through my shackles in the sea glory glory hallelujah jesus is my liberty i'm going free go on and speak again to go on and speak against my borrowed in us. The judge is my defense. I'm going free. Right when the gavel fell, I heard the freedom ring through the heart of hell. I'm going free. I'm going free. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Through my shackles in the sea. Glory, glory. I'm going free. 
This is right out of the Word of God. I am free. I am free. I am free indeed. I am free. I am free indeed. Sing that again. I am free. I am free. I am free indeed. I am free. Now sing, we are free. We are free. We are free indeed. We are free. We are free indeed. Glory, glory. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Because the sun set us free. And Jesus is his name. Someday I'll fly away. Someday I'll fly away on your amazing grace. Your love is my jailbreak. I'm going free. I'm going free. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, again, you've thrown our shackles in the sea. We can dance, we can sing, we can rejoice because we are free indeed. Amen? Thank you, Jesus, for this joy. Hi, Lord, I pray, Lord, as people go home, that the joy of the Lord will be on their hearts, that the praises of God will be upon their lips, and that their homes will be filled with singing and dancing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for making us free. Thank you, Lord, for this congregation. Lord, may we go out and infect the world for Jesus Christ. Amen? Go out and infect the world for Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Love one another. If you have made a commitment to Jesus Christ after listening to this message, or if you have any questions concerning our ministry here at Faith Outreach Center, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us through our website at www.faithoutreach.cc. Or you can call us at 574-223-7631. We would be happy to assist you in any way we can. On behalf of Faith Outreach Center, this is Roger Vogel saying, God bless.